Welcome back to Fight Night. Crip, you're right once again. He's going to use the Paladin deck. The Diablo? That's what he calls it, El Diablo. Oh, man. It's that the Lord of the Terror. Devil, right? That's right. You're actually like a Diablo player. Yeah. Yeah, I like to like play a little character and then you click stuff and that's where the character goes. Yeah. And then you do like Whirlwind or something. That's cool. Whirlwind? One damage to everything? Um, well, it's a little more than one in that game. Oh, is it? Yeah. It's like several damage to everything. Huh. Yeah. Is, it, is it better in that game than, than in Hearthstone? Um, I don't know, but I heard um, Team Mattergrand was doing some Diablo in their practice runs. We can, yeah. we can check in with that. <laughs> we'll have to do so. <laughs> yeah. Well, this game's going to be starting up, and I'm just like really pumped for this, as you should be as well. You know, Both of us are old-time yeah. Paladin players. I think it's probably yeah, our favorite think, class each. I think on top of that, uh, nobody really expected Paladin on either side. I didn't think there would be even one Paladin deck. Like, we knew there'd be Priest. Pretty decent chance it'd be like a Mage somewhere, and we did see that from Reels. But to see a Paladin deck is exciting. And this one is a weird, weird, Wouldn't it have to be? Deck. I guess it would, yeah. With, with nobody knowing how to do it, yeah. if, uh, if it's going to work, it's going to be something people wouldn't mm. expect. And this is something people wouldn't expect. No, they would never expect this. And it, it has some very interesting cards in it. Like, mm -hmm. for instance, Youthful Brewmaster. I had that card in my Paladin deck. Um, I think it was 2013, though. Probably. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. But uh, Youthful Brewmaster, as well as some Blood Knights, it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of exciting to see... You know, he's going to be able to get a lot of utility out of some of these Divine Shield minions. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. I mean, the I think the only strength of the Blood Knights is that a lot of people are playing the Argent Squires. But, um, not this time. <laughs> yeah, that's true, but like at the same time, a lot of times you'll have like an Argent Squire that just doesn't have its shield. Mm -hmm. And if you use Youthful Brewmaster, suddenly, you know... You yeah. play it down, and it's a 6-6 six, six for not too much mana with that Blood Knight. Oh, that's the dude! It might be the, it might oh be the only dude of the tournament. It might be. Alright, what do we do here? Do we crusade it up? A quality attack with dude. <laughs> <laughs> you're not supposed to joke about equality like that. That's a pretty important card. It is, and he's actually only running one, yep. which I found like a little bit surprising, just because it is so good. A little bit more than a little bit surprising. Mm. A lot of it surprising? A lot of it surprising, yeah. Now, do you Blood Knight? Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. I don't think so, actually. Yeah, I think so. You do? Yeah. Blood Knight taking us up here. Okay. I was thinking uh, maybe just play the second Scarlet Crusader. And just gain a little bit more board position than playing next turn. But oh, it looks uh, looks like Admirable maybe had <laughs> a bad smell around his uh, his area there. He's very confused as to what just happened. Okay. It's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Is this actually a Divine Shield deck? Is this actually a deck from September 2013? Well, kind of. <laughs> What are we seeing here? I mean, the Blood Knight's gonna get value. Yeah? God, this deck looks like so much fun, doesn't it? I think here you Peacekeeper and... Yeah. Bounce the Peacekeeper back to your hand. Really? Yeah. I think you dude. Because I, I feel like... The Peacekeeper, I mean, that's a 3-3 three, three body on the board, right? And you have two 2-3s two out. So if you have the... Uh, if you have the the youthful brewmaster out, he's just gonna die. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Karn gonna increases uh, board. Um, and how does how does the paladin deal with Karn? He can deal with it, but it's not. Yeah. It's not very pretty. No, it's not. I think you um, you take out the Sun Fury, bounce your Peacekeeper, and then um, play the Peacekeeper mm. again on card. I like that actually a lot. That's really good. And then Karn's gonna have to run into something too. Mm -hmm. That's actually that's an awesome play. I really like that. 
And you can even play your Argent if you want with all that. I think you do. Mm. Yeah. Because I think you hit the 2-2 Golem with the Blood Knight. And the, the Karn will not attack the Squire because the Karn will choose to die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So your Squire stays with its bubble for the next turn. Mm. You know, that's such a nice play, especially Let because they can't even silence it away because Karn's like, come back to life is yep. probably worth more, mm -hmm. you know? Last warning. Drink with me, friend. Oh, another round of uh, <laughs> peculiar expressions. Oh, it does choose to go for the face instead of the Harvest Golem kill. Dude, Admirable has no idea what is going on. This is actually awesome to watch. What a cool deck. Hmm. I'm not even sure what he's supposed to do. I'm looking at the cards and I don't I don't know. Yeah. Well part of the problem here is that six attack minion is so ridiculous right now, especially when he has this poor BGH in hand. Mm-hmm. He has no way to, he doesn't have like Mark of the Wild or something like that that could help him buff. It's like, it's just kind of a gross situation. I actually think Dark Onyx has already won this game, but I wonder if it's going to work again like that. <laughs> <laughs> that Blood Knight setup play, that's not going to work because you know he's running Blood Knight now. Yeah, but so with the Eastful Remaster, you might, you know, and you can always save an Argent Squire with him and then he's just yeah. like four mana. I just feel that if um, Admirable knew that Dark Horse is playing Blood Knight, he would have played that game differently. Mm -hmm. And I think it would have ended much better for him. Yeah. It definitely would have looked a lot different than what we've seen here. What? Yeah, this situation, like, even with the Savage Roar, he's, like, just a little bit off of doing anything good. <laughs> Maybe both Yetis, then, with the Innovate? Maybe. Yeah, that's what he goes with. All right, well, you know what? He's built himself uh, quite a large board. Yeah. And the Blood Knight only has four health left now. The yep, thing is, you look at this hand, quality. and the hand is so strong for Paladin. It's too bad no Consecrate. would be pretty sick. <laughs> okay, well... I wonder. Do you... Do you equality here? Let me think. I think you do. I think you killed the 2-1 with a 6-4, maybe? Oh, yeah, I see what you're saying. I don't know, you killed a 2-1 with a 3-3. Three, three. And you kill, like, a oh, Yeti one. with the Squire, and then you kill another Yeti with, like, a Hammer, and you hit 6 for face, I think. Yeah, I think that you do go to face with the 6-4. Uh, that sounds about right. Yeah, Let me I actually I quite like that play. And it leaves your board like pretty darn strong, as long as he doesn't have like a swipe or something. Yeah, I mean, a, a, a swipe would be, be pretty bad. all right against that. <laughs> yeah. Looks like he is planning on doing that. I mean, we know he doesn't have a swipe because he has a, a Blood Knight and a Squire that are still alive right now. That's true. Well, there's no swipe. There's no way it's a swipe. No, of course. Yeah. I like the attack order that you pointed out, though, of uh, taking out the 2 1 first with the 3 3 to mm -hmm. keep him on board. Yep. But he might just do this and uh, end up killing off the 3 4 5s. But the thing is, that leaves an easy 2 1 trade into yeah. a 6 1. And yeah. I don't like that at all. I think that would be definitely a mistake. Let me think. By the way, uh, if Dark Wanix loses this game, I am giving up on Paladin forever because this is like he tricked him, he caught him off guard. It's just. He does do equality first. I don't like that at all. Yeah, I think that was a mistake.
god. I think that's the only card he could have drawn that would actually be played this turn. Yeah, he has two one drops in his whole deck. Mm -hmm. So that would make it so. Eh, alright. Innervate. Sick draw on turn seven. Three cards and like, two cards in hand already. Yeah, Admiral's draws have been terrible. Yeah. He really needs those uh, Entrance of Lores to juice back mm -hmm. up. If he does draw, maybe he can uh, make something happen here. Alright, so Dark Onyx gonna go ahead, charge right into face, and uh, what does that's Admiral we even need? I guess. That. Uh, what does that really do, though? It actually doesn't do that much. Well, on his side of the board, what it does is um, it kills the 4-2, kills some creatures off the board. I think it's okay. Charge. Oh, okay. I see what's going on here. He's trying to set up for some sort of like uh, Savage Roar play to try to finish it off. He's going for the win as opposed to the damage control. Mm -hmm. It's it's like the guy that gets like stabbed with the sword but pulls the sword more into himself to kill his opponent in the movie. Yeah. yeah it's exactly like that. Alright. Instead of pulling the sword out, you know. The battle! Not my back on there. Look at that army. Divine Shield beats, man. It's like El Diablo might claim a uh, druid. Yeah. And I think it'll do alright against the last deck, too, against the warrior. Um, it could. It could. I mean, Whirlwind is going to be pretty good against uh, some of these little one toughness guys yeah. and the Divine Shields. You know but... it's not going to be good against the Divine Shield 1-1 one, one creature deck? Hmm. Things like Gorhel. That's true. Yeah. It's not going to do a whole lot. Well, it could slay 7-1-1s one, or 7 shields <laughs> or a combination of shields and 1-1s. One, one. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. I fight. Oh, that 21 health. It really looks like uh, there's not much <laughs> that Admirable can do, man. Nah. Why would you do that? What is the point of that? I don't get it. Explain it to me, Crip. The only loss here is Deathwing, and a few Deathwings, you can handle it, so whatever. Yeah. Alright, so that's Admirable Concedes to the weird and wild Paladin deck of Dark Wanix. Crip, as, as the father of Paladin. Am I? Father of Paladin? Well, no, I was oh, thank you. talking All about right. myself, but so, uh, okay. as the other father of Paladin. Um, Whoa. No, I'm joking. Uh, it's Koyuki that is the true father of Paladin. Anyways, mm -hmm. as, a, as a Paladin aficionado such as yourself, how do you like that deck? Um, well, seeing as the players are just getting out of their booths now, I don't think I'd comment on uh, the number of each specific card in the mm -hmm. deck again. Yeah. But there is a specific card that I'd probably run more than one of. Oh, okay. And other than that, well, bubbles are cool, dudes are cool. It's cool. And if it's cool, why not give it a cool name? El Diablo. Yeah. All the way. All right. Well, El Diablo it is. We're going to have to see, and that's admirable, actually end up using his warrior deck next. Uh, I think uh, he's forced to. And mm -hmm. um, that's probably the only way he's going to match up against it. We'll By see. force. We'll see how that goes. All right, so after quite an unusual game, we don't really see Paladin nowadays. I'm joined by that. That's Admirable, who just lost with his Druid deck. You're down overall in the Series 1-2. There's been pretty tight games, even from the very beginning, Shaman vs. Shaman. Give me some thoughts on the Series. Um, I thought in the Shaman v. Shaman, he got really lucky to draw Harrison after he'd run out of cards. Like, if, he, if his Harrison is in the bottom half instead of the top half there, he loses the game. Um, so, obviously, the Harrison's a blowout in that spot. And then... Um, I won the second game. I didn't. It was like my draw was pretty solid. I had two ancients. I had an Azure Drake. Mm. Uh, I had a Harvey Dent on turn three. <laughs> and the value this town needs. And then uh, the Paladin game. I, I have like basically no idea what he was doing almost the entire time. So it was like the Blood Knight was really strange. And it was like I didn't draw Keeper. I didn't draw Swipe. I didn't draw a Wrath. I didn't draw um, an, a, an Azure Drake. I didn't draw 
an innervate early. I didn't There's draw no an answers, ancient. It, yeah. If I drew the other half of my deck, I think he lost the game. Right. And But now it's down to uh, the last deck. The commentators are saying that they feel like Druid's your strongest class because you know, you're know you known for good Druid play. Uh, but you're down to your last deck. Do you feel like you can take it serious? Um, I think with the way that his Paladin deck's constructed, I don't see him beating the Warrior deck, actually. I think I can just pick apart everything he plays. And then um, I think his last deck's Druid, so that depends on how his Druid deck's built. But overall, I think that the Warrior is slightly favored in that matchup. All right. Well, let's see how the cards are dealt. Good luck in your rest of the match. That deck. So, El Diablo indeed. Uh, Dark Wanix, talk to me a little bit about you know the preparation of this deck. Was that specifically designed against decks like the Druid, or did you just feel like you had you were really confident in the matter what you were playing, you were going to be able to pull out a win here? Uh, the deck is uh, kind of a secret deck. It's haven't been revealed outside the mana grind as for now, and it's uh, actually better than people think. So uh, it simply has to like. Uh, can beat most decks, to be honest, mm -hmm. and uh, they'll have to find out the weakness in it. All right, well, it looks really interesting so far, and now he's down to his last Warrior deck. Uh, a lot of people would say that they're not really too used to that matchup nowadays because you haven't seen too much Paladin. How do you feel like it fares against Warrior? I think my deck is actually really good against Warrior. This is one of the secrets behind the deck as well, in the first place. So. All right, okay, well, we're going to see what's going to happen in the last game. Let's see if Mana Grind can take home a win. Stay tuned for more Fight Night.